Hello and welcome to Sora, Sora of Sars classes. In this video, I am going to solve some questions relating to the chapter of multiple linear regression model. I have already solved from uh, the questions from 1 to 6. Now I will start with the question number 7 today. So, what is the question number 7? In the classical linear regression model, the covariance ui uj equal to 0 refers to the assumption that 0 means value of the disturbance term, homosc elasticity, no autocorrelation and no multicollinearity. So, obviously, 0 mean assumption is referred to as like this, expectation of ui equal to 0. Homosc elasticity means variance of ui is sigma square. Now, this assumption says that the error term ui and the error term u j they have no relation so they have no relation so they are independent they are independent thus the correct answer is no autocorrelation so the correct answer is option c moving to this uh, next question Question number 8. The assumption of multicollinearity means that there should be no correlation among regressors, there should be no linear relationship among regressors, there should be no nonlinear relationship among regressors, and there should be no relationship among regressors. So, the absence of multicollinearity basically means there should be no linear relationship among regressors. The collinear means the linear relationships. So, there should be no really no linear relationships among regressors so this is the correct answer moving to the next question we have in the question number nine that y i is equals to beta 1 beta 2 x 2 beta 3 x 3 u i state which of the following statement is true now when what do we mean by this so if when we do this that is the partial change of y when x 2 is changed we have beta 2 this actually changed so beta 2 actually measures the change the change in mean value of y y mean value because before doing it we actually convert it into the population regression function which is nothing but expectation of y i given mu which is beta 1 plus beta 2 x 2 plus beta 3 x 3 now when we take differentiation of this mean value with respect to x2 we get beta 2 now when we get beta 2 this actually means the change in the mean value of y per unit change in x2 holding x3 constant similarly when we do this that is the partial change with respect to x3 then we get beta 3 this means the net effect of unit change in x3 on the mean value of y while the net of the any effect of x2 may have on mean y so both these options are correct so option 3 is the correct answer now moving to the next question which is the question number 10 the measure of proportion or the percentage of variation of y explained by the explanatory variables are jointly given by this is basically the ess or explain sum of square which actually given by r square so the r square is the correct answer The question number 11 says the multiple coefficient of determination measures the goodness of fit in the multiple regression model, humus elasticity of multiple regression model, heterous elasticity of multiple regression model and multi collinearity of multiple regression model. The multiple coefficient basically says how good the regression line is representing the data therefore it is related to the concept of goodness of fit so the first option is the correct option coming to question number 12 the linear regression results the impact of the per capita the impact of per capita gnp and uh, uh, impact of per capita gnp uh, the pgnp and the female literacy rate on the child mortality now, when start variable indicates standardized variable, can we say PGNP has lower impact on CM as compared to FLR? FLR has lower impact on CM as compared to PGNP. Cannot compare the coefficients directly and the impact depends upon T value. So, obviously, if we just take a differentiation of PGNP, we get 0.40. Whereas, if we take 
If LR, then we have 0.04. So obviously, the impact of PGNP on CM while keeping FLR constant is 0.40, while for this case it is 0.04 while keeping the PGNP constant. Therefore, FLR has lower impact on CM as compared to PGM. So in this video, I have solved questions from 7 to 12. Hope this will be helpful for your exams. Uh, until next time, thank you.